Okay, this is the review of the Tamron 85mm f1.8. The first portrait lens, portrait lenses don't need vibration control by the way, the first portrait lens with vibration control. Very heavy. I did a lot of testing with this lens and I made sure I made a very thorough, because everybody kept asking me about this lens, compared it against the king of portrait lenses, the Zeiss 85mm uh, f1.4. Not at 1.4, obviously, since it's an f1.8 lens. Um, ooh, it was. There were a lot of things. It was easy to uh, come to a decision about about this lens because those attributes were bad. Let me get into them in a second. And some other things were hard because I had to be pragmatic in the proper perspective of how to look at this lens. You know, as Tamron presented it. I mean. You know, it's kind of like some uh, snooty McSnoots that drives around in a Rolls Royce and he takes a test drive in a Toyota and he's complaining, you know, oh, this sucks, that sucks, and, you know, Toyota's a perfectly good car. That's kind of a crude analogy, but <laughs> it's certainly an applicable one. I'll get to specifics here in a second about the attributes of the lens and what's good, and there are more than a few things that are bad about this lens. I um, tested this against the Zeiss 8514. The uh, Nikkor uh, 85mm uh, uh, F1.4 D-Series, 85mm F1.8 uh, D-Series, and uh, lastly, most importantly really, the 85mm uh, F1.8 G. Um, what are the issues of this lens? And Let's roll down and make an intelligent, logical conclusion based upon facts, correct perspective of how to view this lens, and you know what are some things that are just absolutely undeniable about this lens and I've found that other people have complained about it as well it's got too much high contrast mud to replace the chromatic aberration that's found uh, in 85 millimeter portrait lens uh, everything as I've said before countless times and there's no lens designer on earth that will ever argue with me they'll all agree with me that all lenses are compromises you design a lens for a group of things as much as you can the positive attributes and this view of negative attributes as possible but along with some of those negative attributes you can actually have amazing characteristics that the professional photographers like and uh, it is not simply resolution I mean you know you've got simple-minded idiots well how sharp is it how sharp is it how sharp you know sharpness is not everything it's like a uh, connoisseur of wines talking about alcohol and I don't care about what it ta what's the alcohol content that's the same thing as some fool talking about how sharp the lens is. What are the problems with this lens? And let's be pragmatic and logical about the conclusions about the 85mm f1.8 uh, VC Tamron lens. Because I've got a lot of love for Tamron, especially what they've been doing lately, but this lens has got some serious mistakes. Um, too many elements, the rendition is lacking in too much micro contrast for one. Um, this lens actually, I'm not talking about vignetting here, this lens uh, actually has a hot spot. A uh, hot spot is uh, readily apparent to shooting high contrast scenes. Um, it, it's, it's easily visible. Um, not vignetting in the conventional sense, but a true center hot spot. And I was kind of afraid of this on a fast portrait lens like this with that many elements. Uh, that what happens is, is that uh, you, normally you think of a hot spot and fall off as vignetting. Well, that is true and that's something everybody looks for, but there's something else in a lens quality uh, that is uh, not directly relatable to nasty fall off on a full frame sensor and it is uh, too much hot spotting on uh, the center of, uh, of, uh, of your composition and uh, that's an issue. Uh, the peripheral edge resolution and deterioration between f, uh, between at f1.8 and f2 on this lens is both significant and what I would call poor. Uh, even the Nikkor uh, 85mm f1, and I've tried out two samples of this lens. This is the lens I've actually done the most testing on, but I've tried out two samples, so you can't say it's a bad copy. The, uh, the Nikkor 85mm f1.8 D series just spanked it. The Zeiss spanked it all to hell and back. The uh, edge uh, resolution IQ, uh, not referring to vignetting, and I'm not talking about far edge, I'm talking about. Uh, near center, meaning mid-range on the 35 millimeter frame, is uh, bad. It's what I would uh, actually uh, rate at a level of, you know, 
you know, out of 100% being best, what would it be? It'd be about 60% or less. So it's definitely poor. I spent a lot of time with this lens, and uh, you know, you can see the Tamron lenses that they're designed uh, for hobbyist uh, portrait uh, shooters. This specific lens, what I'm referring to. You know, there's no chromatic aberration basically on this lens, which is awesome. The resolution is uh, very good. The isolative depth of field, uh, the bokeh, is uh, is very nice. However, it, there's good bokeh and there's bad bokeh. I'll talk about it in a second. But this lens actually lacks many of the professional portrait qualities of a good portrait, the 85 millimeter, and other uh, portrait lenses in the 100 uh, millimeter range and the 85 to one. 85 to 135 uh, portraiture range, which is up towards uh, the range of uh, headshots. So, uh, you know, uh, the qualities uh, found in the Zeiss, the Nikkor, and the Voigtlanders are others, the professional portraiture qualities that, you know, this is truly an art form, obviously. If you want to have a certain look, that's your own, uh, you know, that's your own prerogative, but there are empirical hardwired, hardwired, hardwired criteria within the brain that human beings actually see things as more aesthetically beautiful and pleasing as so far as how something is rendered and this lens lacks many of those professional attributes not all of them but it lacks too many of them um, is it fair to place this against the best well that's a matter for you to debate um, the chromatic aberration is nearly non-existent in f1.8 and f2 which is awesome there's also you know it is an f1.8 it's not an f1.4 um, that's arguable and debatable as well as so far as, uh, you know, this lens in f1.4 would cost way too much money. I mean, the glass would be substantially bigger and it would just be way too damn expensive for the hobbyist uh, portrait photographer. So that's understandable. So I really can't bitch about the lens. You have to be pragmatic in making an evaluation of this lens. Um, the autofocus tracking is no bueno. It's it's bad. Uh, I give it a six out of ten. It really like a five and a half out of ten. But you know, it's, it's no worries. It's a portrait lens. We're not shooting, uh, you know, stuff going around the racetrack or birds in flight. No big deal. Um, you know, the Zeiss has no autofocus at all. It's a manual focus lens. You know, let's take that into perspective. Um, static autofocus acquisition. This is the problem. Static auto, and there have been a lot of people complain about this in this lens. The static autofocus acquisition in this lens is bad to the point where I give it a 5 or maybe even a hair less than 5 out of 10. So that is, uh, that is, uh, as the Russians would say, slishkom, uh, slishkom plocha. Absolutely slishkom plocha. No bueno. Not good. 13 elements, way too much sacrifice. Even the Zeiss at f1.4 is a six element lens, so this is over twice as many elements, and that causes serious issues. Um, well, they went for something that's cool. It's a portrait lens. The Zeiss lens, you gotta back way the hell up to be within range on the minimum focusing distance. They got 2.6 inch minimum focusing distance on this lens, which is a damn mistake uh, from Tamron, which costed uh, and the the lens design and how it renders uh, cost uh, you know uh, points and the quality of how it actually renders a normal portrait shot, so they shouldn't have tried to be all thing. You know, you don't need two and a half uh, inches of uh, minimum focusing distance on a damn portrait lens. Well, maybe someone doesn't want to take a portrait. Maybe they want to get in and take a shot of a list. It's a portrait lens. Okay, it's designed to be a portraiture lens. Well, you know, by making trying to be all things to all people, they ended up screwing the lens. By sticking 13 elements in this lens and eliminating out a lot of the chromatic aberration, when you, you know, it's kind of like I can destroy everything by bleaching the hell out of something, right? It's like, well, your, your pillow's got cooties, we're going to bleach it. And, uh, you know, you, and you bleach it and all the cooties are gone out of your pillow, but you realize now that uh, the fluff factor and how it actually slept has now been altered to the point where it sucks. Your pillow might be cootie free now that you bleached it. And by adding so many glass elements, Tamron bleached the lens of its positive attributes. And I've talked about this endlessly. Everything in lens design is a trade off. Every lens manufacturer on earth is going to agree with me on that fact because it's irrefutable and it is undeniable 100%. Um, for $750, I actually give it a, a good value. You know, uh, for the hobbyist uh, portrait photographer, uh, who, who would like this lens? I mean, uh, the uh, resolution 
is uh, really good. And I give it an overall score of 72% really like 70 percent and that is not a good score um it's the exact same price this lens new 750 bucks is the exact same price as this lens yes this is a manual focus lens but this is a true professional portrait lens with a build quality of 10 out of 10 you know it'll, it'll kick your ass down the road all day long it'll kick this uh, lens's ass down the road all day long and the qualities and everything out does have a big good bit of chromatic aberration what that lens does is is second to none. It's it's incredible. But you know, it's a manual focus lens. It doesn't have vibration control. It is a true professional portrait lens. Um, this lens is trying to be too many things to too many people. I've got this on the Nikon D810 right now, by the way, if you can't see it. The vibration is good, but it is not that excellent. 67 millimeter front filter, um, 1.5 pounds. Quality of build is just a genuinely a, a 9 out of 10. The lens is too damn soft. Uh, the bokeh is good, and a soft portrait lens uh, is usually described, uh, is usually very desirable as soft. However, mud is another form of unpleasant. This lens has mud. You'd be like, well, soft is good. We want a portrait lens to be soft. There's good soft, and there's bad soft. Like a soft pie is great. Um, a soft, saggy sandwich is bad. Um, this is a form of soft, and I found many other people complaining about this, and this is what I immediately noticed. This is a bad type of soft. I've always called the softness mud. Mud. And uh, mud soft is not uh, good soft. It's just not. Maybe there's some goofball out there that likes muddy lenses. I, I definitely don't like mud. Um... So, many people, uh, you know, will praise this lens, but those people that have experience with 85mm portrait lenses to any decent degree generally will not. I know this for a fact, so there's just no question about it. You know, while it's a good lens, a good build quality, I can't recommend this lens. Um, I know that if, uh, if a hobbyist bought this, you know, they love it, love the vibration control, which is not so great. Even static autofocus tracking is not good. It's it's decent enough, but it's it's not good. Um, but most people will would like this lens, but that is only for lack of experience of better stuff. And both of these lenses are the exact same price, by the way. It's like yeah, it's a manual focus lens. It's faster. It's made better. It renders better. The saturation is better. The color micro contrast is better. It's better, better, better all the way down the road. It'll kick this lens's butt. They're both the exact same price. Like yeah, this has no vibration control. Yes, it uh, has no autofocus. It's a professional lens. The same is true with the 85mm 1.8G and 1.4G. Uh, better lens, period. They have no vibration control, which you don't need in a portrait lens. You don't need it, okay? It's a neat little feature. Oh, we got vibration control. Vibration control on this lens is not that great. Uh, it works. It's a bit noisy, but it's not really great. Um... Okay, so it's the first 85mm with VR, but, you know, so what? It's a damn portrait lens. So really, this is a bit too much a gimmick to be selling a portrait lens with VR. I mean, I know that'll be a selling point for some people. I mean, but anyway. The resolution is very good on this lens. Um, it's got bad contrast, moderate color saturation, and the out-of-camera is muddy. Actually, the, the type of mud that this lens produces can't be fixed in Lightroom. It cannot be fixed. It's bad. It, it, generally speaking, it's got plenty fine good bokeh that people would like, but it's got bad mud. And shooting a lot of different types of scenarios, high contrast, low contrast, uh, dark, skin tones, um, speculars, uh, uh, hardcore a transition between uh, specular and shadow. This lens is really bad. Really, really, really bad where you got uh, no mid-tones. You got shadow and hardcore speculars. This lens will just throw a lot of mud in your face. That is not good. There are a lot of situations where you have hardcore speculars against shadows. And when that happens, this lens throws mud like a monkey flings poo. And that is no bueno. Um, so, you know, the resolution is good. And people look at that and, oh, it's fuzzy. You know, it's, and most people, well, let's just get down to the brass tacks here. Would most people be very happy with this lens in general? The answer is yes. Would anybody with the experience with a lot of portraiture lenses be happy with this lens? 
With 100% certainty, I can say that in most cases, the answer would be no. No. I love Tamron to death. I like what they're doing recently. I named their 1530 lens of the year last year, but this lens has no chance. It's got a snowflake's chance in hell of even coming close to that. Um, it's good build quality. It's got good resolution. But it's got too many bad qualities. Tamron tried to make this lens too many things. Close focusing distance. Absolutely no chromatic aberration. Let's throw a crap load of lens elements in there. No. No. Um, would I be perfectly happy if, like, here's the lens. You forgot to bring your lenses. You know, here's the lens you got. And, uh, you know, you're going to shoot. Uh, so, you know, I, you can make it work. But I, I would not choose this lens, nor would I ever intentionally pick it up to use it. Would I, I said, well, I'd be decently happy with the results if I had to use it and I forgot. And I, uh, you know, yeah, but I would never grab for this lens for many valid reasons. Empirical reasons, not personal, but empirical reasons. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.